Hey there, folks, what's going on? It's Kodiak and Livid coming back at you in stereo for another Crucible character video. And today we are checking out Ajona, the Ocean's Whisper. Guys, if you're looking for a sniper, well, this is the one for you. So we're going to go ahead and just roll the trailer. We had a chance to uh, play this at a preview event. We got hands on with a lot of the characters. Uh, but the best way to get you guys introduced is just roll the trailer and we'll talk about it afterwards. So let's go. Cool looking I character. Am the She's such a Split cool design. Like her look. A raider from the planet Orison, Ajona is a deadly marksman who excels at taking out her prey from a distance. Love the way she steadies that rifle too. Her basic attack over is the shot arm. From a oh yeah, like the arm shot. Yeah. Yeah, it's and just really cool. Down sights for increased accuracy and damage. Ajona uses her grappling hook to cover terrain quickly. Fighter, man. I gotta say, that looks really cool when she does she that, but I couldn't for the life of me do that. <laughs> her jamming shroud blocks detection of herself and nearby allies. That's one of the so coolest she's abilities. In play, do yourself a favor and don't let your guard down. Ever. Oh, I rises. never noticed that. Did you see that thing? What? The little pod that she popped that rained acid down? That was cool. That was cool. Yeah, I mean, she's a really interesting character, guys. She's not a true sniper by any stretch of the imagination, but she fits in this really interesting spot in the game. We've seen people, Livid and I are not great at her. No, we're, we're terrible. We're terrible at her. Like we played in that preview event. Neither of us were good at her, but we saw people pop off with her and it's because her toolkit is really, really tailored to what she does well. So Livid, let's, let's, we'll get there. Let's start with initial thoughts how did you like Ajona? How did you like the play style? And where does she fit into the game? Like, don't get me wrong. I like her as a character. And from the people that we played with, there's some people that already, you know, devs and stuff that have played her for hundreds of hours. And they're, they're much better <laughs> at her than either of us could even, I think, dream to be at this point. Um, but I think she's a really good character once you really finesse, once you really finesse her and get used to it. Like, she's got a really cool kit. And we can go ahead and go through the kit really quick. Um, she's got her basic long range sniper. Um, it has hip fire, which kind of studies in the arm, and then you can aim it. And when you aim it, you do more damage, which is interesting. Right. And it's not a true aim, it's just a zoom in. Right, you're zoomed in, but you do more damage, but it also kind of makes her move a little bit slower. So that's the kind of trade off with that. Um, then she has, uh, she has her grappling hook, where she can swing from surfaces, as you saw. Um, it's not super long of a grappling hook. You still got to know your range at which it can go to. So that's like one of the part of the skill caps. Like I found myself like trying to use it and just it keep ricocheting off surfaces and using my charge. So a lot to get used to there. Um, she also has the ability that's called jamming shroud. And it's, it, as you saw, it was like a spike she planted in the ground and it puts a bubble up and it prevents detection in the area. And what's cool is it prevents it from um, your crouch ability that everybody has that they can see enemies. Um, it protects against uh, people scan actual abilities in their kits. It just hard hides your team, which is really cool if you're trying to do sneaky stuff like capture objectives without people knowing where you're at or grabbing points on the map or just planning to ambush someone before they come around a corner that they can't scan that area. It's one of the coolest abilities in the game because it's a really fresh take on that kind of shroud. It's not just a smoke cloud. It's not just some sort of obscurement. There's there's a lot of thought put into when to use that ability because like Livid said, you can see through it. You can see the enemy team, but you don't get their outline. You no longer can use your your scanning ability to see the enemy team or the you know your team if you're if you're in there. So it's a really really cool ability. It also has the added effect you can explode it by hitting it again. It's not a lot of damage, but it does work. Right. And then her other main um piece of her kit is squid mine. It's a it's a mine that you play on the ground like any other kind of sniper character where they put traps to you can kind of know where the enemies are coming from. And when they get close, it, it pops up and tracks them. So it's like a spider mine that, that chases after things, but they call it a squid mine because she's aquatic, right? Um, and then it also provides a little added benefit of it slows the enemies it hits. So it gives you a chance that if you know they're coming for you, it pops that, you grapple and you get out of there. That's kind of her role. You do not want to be close combat. I mean, both of us had the chance to play this character. She definitely fulfills that long range sniper role on a team. Again, you got to remember that Crucible is a PvEVP type game. Most of the game modes uh, involve some elements of PvE, some elements of PvP. She does not do the PvE stuff well at all. She just doesn't do enough of that consistent damage. She doesn't have a way to get away from things very easily other than her grappling hook. But when she is in the PvP mode in the right hands, I mean, absolute astronomical amount of damage. Yeah, I, I was getting 
you know, pretty quickly deleted by some players that were much better than myself at that. Right. And there are not a lot of hard counters to her. If she, if you're good at, at playing those sniper characters and you're halfway across a map and you're picking off any of the other characters in the game, there's very little most of the other characters can do to an Ajona. Right. And if you're playing her character well, you're going to see those people trying to get to you to flank you and you got get out of there. So that's that's kind of like your situational awareness, your situational awareness with your character has to be like you have to be on the top of your game with her in order to use her effectively. All right. So where does Ajona fit in on a team? Uh, she's a she's also a hard DPS, but more of like a glass cannon that she kind of uh, she doesn't really want to be in the middle of the fight. As you said, she she wants to be out back just picking targets off. So she, she's really good at like complementing a, a harder DPS that can really get into the fight, do a lot of chip damage. And if that person tries to blink out, she's the one that then catches them at a distance. Like that's how I I see her being played or just kind of like the the scout that lets us know what's coming because she can kind of move around pretty easily with that grappling hook if you're good. Right. She doesn't have a lot of team utility. That's one of the things about her. She's really all about that damage and the accuracy. So if you're a high skill player that is is good with sniper characters, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage. You're not going to provide much else for your team other than that jamming ability. But that jamming ability, if you're using that, it's most likely because you've either gotten out of position, you're trying to cloak your actions around a PVE um, point of interest or something like that. So it's a really interesting character in the sense that she doesn't bring a lot to the table in terms of utility, but what she brings to the table is in team fights, in that PVP aspect of the game. Yep, 100%. All right, so let's look at the essence upgrades here. And remember, guys, you have to pick the essence upgrades before a match. So we're going to go through each of the tiers here. As you do the PvP and the PvE in each game mode, uh, you're actually going to unlock each tier. So we'll take you through each one and talk about kind of uh, how they affect her overall gameplay. So Livid, take us through level one here. So level one, as always, we have three possible choices here. Uh, your first choice is expanded quiver, and it increases your maximum ammo by two. As you all know, it's a straight DPS increase. You can fire longer before having to reload, which means you're less exposed in the time that you're trying to damage people, which is good. Um, her second choice is Seize Bounty. Your squid mines are thrown at an increased range, and it's a pretty decent range uh, that it extends it by. And it increases the number of squid mines by one. And I, I'm pretty sure that that, that one is uh, it's charge-based, I believe, at that point. So you get two that you can kind of throw out there. Um, and then the last choice here is Tidal Reach. Uh, it's a grappling hook, and it gains an additional charge, so you get two charges on your grappling hook, but the trade-off is it reduces the range and increases your cooldown by two seconds. So while that seems like it's got some really negatives in there, and, and for people that aren't good with the grappling hook, it's it's some negatives, and I wouldn't recommend using this one first. Get used to the normal one before you try messing with this. Uh, but I saw higher skill cap players doing some crazy leaps around the map using this. So you it's you got to really know your grapple range and, and your positioning with that one. And if you're scrub characters or scrub players like Livid and myself, you're most likely going to go with Expanded Quiver. You just want those extra shots in there because you're probably going to need them. The other two options do provide you with flexibility in other areas, but it's most likely going to be you're going to take those when you're a little bit more comfortable with this character. When you know how to use that grappling hook, you know the maps innately so that you can really maximize the potential for them. Yep. All right, I'm going to take you through level two here. Deadly Shroud, detonating an active jamming shroud inflicts damage and knocks back targets. We mentioned that you can detonate your shroud. That's exactly how you're going to do it. It's going to knock back enemies. It's going to inflict some damage. It's a nice utility to the already really cool ability that is jamming shroud. So it's just another evolution of that ability. You get that at level two. You have no other options, so you got to take it. Right, it's cool because people will jump into your shield trying to engage you guys. And if you grapple away from that point, if they're still within that shield, you pop that thing as you're grappling away and it gives you a little bit of extra time to escape. Got to know when to pop it, of course. Got to know when to explode it. But if you do it right, you're most likely going to get away. Yes. All right, Livid, take us through level three here. Level three, as usual, we get three upgrades again. Uh, the first choice is Dazzling Burst. Critical hits blind your targets. So if you're really good at landing headshots, you're going to constantly be blinding your enemies, which is, I don't know, borderline insane with how overpowered this can be in the right hands. Um, the second choice is heal in shadows. Uh, you heal 20 health per second when you're cloaked. So whenever that dome is up, if you're standing with that, that dome and you're cloaked or you pop these little flowers on the map that give you a cloaking, it's uh, it gives you a 20 health per second regen. So you don't always have to be using med kits, which is really good. And then your third choice here is safe harbor. And it increases your speed by 10% when you're within the dramming shroud and it includes your allies. So, you know, it's overall, you pop it, maybe sometimes your allies are trying to catch up and get away from someone. They run through your shroud, they get that little 10% boost to get to the other side, and then you guys get out. It's 
a good little utility bonus. I wouldn't say this is the best choice at all. Um, I think the other ones are a little bit better. I would say the first choice is the Dazzling Burst is overall just better. Right, and this is a utility tier all the way. There's no real added damage output benefits here. It's all about just making this character a little bit more uh, utilitarian. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take you through level four here. Blend with the Reefs. Gain Cloak for 1.5 seconds after using Grappling Hook. So this is just going to be all around great, guys. If you're using Grappling Hook to get away, you're going to get a little flexibility to move in a direction, bob and weave in whatever way you want to go under the safety of a cloak. Now, if you do go with that uh, title reach ability in the first one, you're basically going to get three seconds of cloaking because you can use grapple hook and then grapple hook again. So it's it synergizes well with that. Obviously, you don't have any other choices in tier four here, but it's a decent way to kind of amplify your ability to escape. Yeah, I think it's overall it's just really good. It complements your kit super well. All right, Livid, take us through level five. In level five, we get the two choices as usual. Uh, the first one is neuro, uh, neurotoxic venom. Uh, squid mines have an increased slow duration, so what's not to like about that? It gets slowed even more, makes it an easier target if you have them at range, and they pop them, you sit in back, you just pop them, they can't really get away, or just for escape, it's really good. Um, and then the other choice is strike to the head. Uh, it increases critical hit multiplier from 2.5 to 3. And while that might not seem like a lot, it is a significant damage increase in the scope of things, especially when people are taking dot damage and stuff like that. 2.5 to 3 is a lot for a crit multiplier and i think overall this is probably the better choice yeah i mean eventually you just gotta break this character down to the fact that she is a sniper you want to get those headshots the more headshots you do the more people die the utilitarian stuff the the stuff about the neurotoxin mines and things like that it's fine but this character is all about doing that damage with the rifle hitting those heads and knocking people down that's what she's about yeah that's that's fairly accurate <laughs> i mean after both playing you know we both had a chance to play her I know we're not the best care, you know, we're not we're not the best players with her. Personally, I feel like there needs to be some retuning to her kit. There, the kit does not seem perfect quite yet compared to some of the other characters we've talked about, but I'm interested to know your thoughts. Yeah, I would say the same. And there there's something that just felt a little lacking about her. And I I literally can't put my finger on what that is. And it, it's hard for me to even give you give you a, a word on that because she does damage really well, just not in my hands. <laughs> I was I was clapped quite a few times by some players using her in a couple shots. So she's good at what she does. It's just uh, she feels really strange at certain places. Like I think the grappling hook is a high skill cap thing, and if you really learn how to use it, it'll feel a lot better. That's probably what I would say. Um, that might be where we're missing the ball on it, right? But once again, this just takes. I think she just takes a lot of practice to get used to. She's one of those high skill cap characters, right? And it's important to remind people she really is the only true long range character in the game at this point. There are no other characters that are as effective as her at long range. Now, long range is not the same as a true sniper where you can scope in and hit scan. Not quite the same. It's a projectile based character, but she is the most effective at long range. So. If you play her with that in mind, and that's how most people played her, you know, it's going to be very challenging if you're playing a Dracol or something like that to close that gap and get her without you, without her seeing you. Yeah. All right. Final word on the character, Ajona. Uh, I think she's great. I think she's a really great character. Like I said, I need to get better with her before I can say that I like her, you know, like playing her. I, there's other characters I will prefer to play as, you know, 100% of the time. Um, but if this is your type of class, I think you will find a lot of enjoyment in mastering her. That's what I would say. Can we just also take a moment to appreciate how badass she looks from top to bottom? What a cool design for a character. Yeah. Yeah. The art direction on that character, whoever, whoever is the uh, art director on this and the designer who made this kudos to you. Cause it's one of the coolest looking characters I've seen in a game in a while. All right, folks, if you want more Crucible videos in your feed, don't forget to like and subscribe to Legion Gaming. We just unlocked our Crucible section on our Discord. Over 3,000 members there would love to have a few more in our Crucible, you know, team, if you will. And as always, guys, my name is Kodiak. That's been Livid. And from everybody here at Legion Gaming, thanks for watching and play on. Take care, guys.